And then, of course, it is March Madness. Joining us right now is the head coach at Fairleigh Dickinson. First year there. Three-time East Coast Conference Coach of the Year on the Division II level. This season, the Knights are 19-15. and 15. They're 10-6 and six in Northeast Conference play. They are the 16th seed in the East. They're going to take on fellow 16 seed Texas Southern in the first four in Dayton, Ohio, tomorrow night, 640 Eastern. The winner then advances to take on the top seed, Purdue. Tobin Anderson is my guest. Tobin, it is great to have you on the show. How are you? Hey, Jim, how are you? Great, great to be on. It is great to have you on. So take me back. You took over an FDU program that, frankly, was kind of in shambles 10 months ago. If I told you that a program that you inherited had won four games and in less than one year you would be dancing in March, what would you have said? I'd say you're out of your mind. There's, there's no chance that would happen. I mean, just, just it's a remarkable turnaround. And, and um, yeah, we, we got the job after four wins. You're just trying to get, be competitive and try to get to eight or ten wins and build a team hopefully in four years you can, you can compete and have a chance to go to the NCAA tournament so in, in one year to do it is pretty pretty special and uh, a little bit of luck involved too but we uh, you know we're happy to be here excited to play play uh, tomorrow night hey listen I understand you've got work to do you've got this amazing opportunity in front of you and I know you're locked in but you just said it I mean you, you were hoping that maybe in four years we're competitive yet you're already here I mean even for somebody who's done this before who knows how to put these things together how does it feel that this is a reality? Yeah, it's, it's it's pretty incredible. Like just to hop on the charter flight last night and fly out here and just to see our guys, the excitement they have in their eyes. And we got to keep them grounded because it's still, it's still a game to play and we still want to win in advance and, and see how far we can go. So, uh, But it is pretty pretty special and just to see our, our guys. And like when I got the job last year, I don't think anybody would have imagined we'd have a chance to be in this position. So uh, to see our name on selection Sunday to be in a big dance, to have a chance to, to be out here and, and, and play in is, is incredible. That's what, you all, that's what you dream about. You, I mean, you want to be in the NCAA tournament. That's the biggest goal at the start of the year. And to be here is uh, is a remarkable achievement, and it took a lot of people to, to help us out. A lot of a lot of uh, the players have been great, the staff has been great, the administration has been unbelievable. So you know we're we're excited, and um, yeah, it's been it's been a wild ride. It is like the best thing. It's an amazing opportunity. Tobin Anderson's joining us. You know, you've been a part of rebuilds before, as I mentioned. When you walk into a situation where a team has won only four games, obviously morale is not going to be high. Culture maybe non-existent. What were the very first steps that you took in trying to rebuild that thing and put it back together? Well, you got to kind of figure out what the problems were in the first place. You know, so there's like, what's what's the what what are the issues there? And like, uh, I thought our administration was excellent. So there's a lot of times. People blame the administration or blame, blame people above you, but they actually were very, very supportive. They wanted us to win. You know, we had a lot. You know, there's some players. There's some issues with the players as far as not even on, on the court, but off the court as far as going to class, doing the right things. So you got to kind of change the culture and make sure, hey, we're going to do the right things off the court. And then you got to, you know, who wants to come with us? Who wants to be part of this? It's going to be hard. I mean, we we spent all summer, you know, running, you know, on the track at 6 a.m. and doing doing stuff you don't want to do. Like, who wants to put in that kind of work and the, and the work ethic and, and put in the time and and it's not easy. Like, it, it's, a, it's a challenge every day, and there have been a lot of bumps in the road. And I was lucky, Jim. I, bring, I was able to bring – when I came from Division Two. I brought four of my players with me um, who ended up being really good players for us. Division Two guys who are now – three of them start for us, and three of them are probably our, three of our better players. So I had some familiarity with the guys we brought over with us, and that was a, that was a big help for me. And then I, and I hired a great staff. You know, the, the people you have around you are so important. So the staff was, was incredible. And in today's college basketball world – you got to be able to put together a team on the fly. Yeah, that's just part of that's just part of how it is with the portal transfers, guys going here and there. You got to be able to, to, to do that. And so we were able to get, to put it together, get the right kind of guys. And sometimes the, the pieces just fit. And this year it fit for us, and they just worked out well. And and um, you know we thought, yeah, like we thought this might take a, a long process, and to be here now is is pretty incredible. Tobin Anderson's joining us. I was going to ask you about a couple of guys that you brought with you. Grant Singleton, Dimitri Roberts. I may circle back to them because it's always nice to have that kind of familiarity. They're familiar with you. You're familiar with them. You get some uh, uh, veteran leadership. But when you took this thing on, I mean, did you have to start, Tobin, essentially from scratch? Did you have to start over completely? Yeah. It was almost below scratch. Like you're almost starting out, you're almost in a hole to start with, you know, for the most because like you said, the morale the morale is so bad. You're coming off a four win season. Um, they're just you know, the the alumni, the fans, the people they're just you know, I got I got so many uh people talking to me saying, Hey, you can't win there, it's impossible, it's, it's not gonna happen, it's a it's a hard job, all that kind of stuff. And so we had to we had to build that back up from from, from basically from nothing, you know, and try to get that energy going and even the players that return, it's like you got to try to inspire them. Like, hey, this can be done here. We can win. And the guys that brought with me, the two guards you just mentioned, they're both fifth-year seniors. 
So they came from a situation where they were, they were winning all the time, winning 25 games a year. They've got to kind of buy into a whole new, a whole new situation. So it's been, um, it's been, uh, and I, I know, I, I'm not sure there's one thing that makes it happen. It's just a lot, a lot of moving pieces. But uh, to make it happen in one year is, is something uh, we're all proud of. And like, but like, we want to win tomorrow night. Like we want to, we want to keep it going and keep, keep. Uh, Keep this thing going as long as we can. Yes, yeah, that's the thing, right? You certainly, it's an amazing thing just to be there. But since you are there, you, you're in it to win it. Let me ask you this. When you start the year three and six, and again, you know it was going to be tough. You had a loss to Hartford in late November. You're three and six. Obviously, you probably did some soul searching. You thought about what's going <laughs> on, what's going right, what's going wrong. But the team has gone 16 and eight since. What clicked? What changed? Well, we got beat by Hartford, and, and Hartford is, if you don't know the story, was Division One. They're going to Division Three, so they're one of probably they're probably one of the worst teams, if not the worst team in Division One. We lost, did not play well, um, did not look look interested in playing hard, playing you know doing the right things. We came back had a had a six a.m. film session for about two hours, and it was an honest like, hey, this this has got to change. This doesn't change. We'll be lucky to win eight games. So we were we were in a tough spot right there. We thought, and I actually told my staff, I said, fellas. Just hang in there. It's going to be a long year. We got to get better. We got to make sure these guys get better. I'll try to try to do the best we can. Let's try to win eight or ten games. And we went to St. Joe's and St. Joe's out of Philly. It's a pretty good A-10 school. We and we beat them bad. We beat them by 16 points at their place. And that just, you know, it got got our mojo going. Like we got got our got our got our juices going again. Like we we can be pretty good. And the whole thing just turned around. So I'm not sure it was it was the film session at 6 a.m. But it, it was a it was an honest like, hey, this is this is not going well. It's got to change, and we have the potential to make it happen. So, uh, you know, credit to the guys for hanging in there. Tobin Anderson, my guest, for a few more moments. Tobin, you mentioned that there were people telling you, people you like, people you respect, saying, don't take that job. Don't take that job. That is a hard job. (laughs) Or even, you cannot win there. You're not the first coach that I've heard say that. When everybody's telling you not to, why did you decide to? That's a great question, you know, because my wife is like, well, why why, why are you doing this? We're winning. We're having a lot of success. It's been a lot of fun. Um, you know, a couple of things. They won in the past. This is our seventh NCAA trip for, for FDU. So they won, won before. Actually, we're here in 2019, won a game. So there is a tradition here of being successful. We're in a great area right outside New York City, so we're in a place where you can recruit. There's tons of people around here who love basketball. There's a lot of tradition here. And then, you know, for me, honestly, I, I didn't have to move. I literally, I'm probably the only Division One coach in the country to go from – I was a head coach Division Two. I didn't have to move for my new job. I, I, instead of driving five miles, I drive 20 now, which is not too bad. So a lot of things kind of fell into place. And I love the administration. I love the people I work for. And, um, you know, it ended up being a heck of a move. But there were were some times after that Hartford loss, I I thought I should probably try to go back to St. Thomas Aquinas and start over again there because it was was, uh, some down days there too. So we're, uh, you know, we're – it's, it's, it's pretty exhilarating, but it has not been easy. No. One last thought for you. Selection Sunday, and of course, nothing is easy, but something kind of funny. Well, funny to me, probably not to you. But during the selection show, Fairly Dickinson was initially not listed on the screen <laughs> before the omission was corrected, and then the celebration began for your party. Look, you knew you had the automatic bid locked up already for the field of 68, but did your heart maybe skip a beat for a moment when you didn't see your team on the bracket? I thought Jimmy were going to be like a three or four seed, maybe. I thought maybe they changed our seed instead of being a 16. We're going to, we're going to, be, a, we're going to awesome. be a three or four seed. So I was, I was excited about that. And then when it's like, oh, the reality hits, actually are a 16 seed. So it's just part of how it is. But no, it was, we knew we were in, but it got a little scary there for my two years. <laughs> I think that's great. See, you guys, I told you. I told you we'd be a three. We're in. <laughs> All right. So you got that great opportunity, too. I've been really good to have you on the show. I think it's an amazing story. You've done a great job. But you're not done yet. you got a big opportunity in front of you. Good luck and great to have you on the show. I appreciate it, Jim. Thanks for having me on. Thank you, Tobin Anderson.